my journey starts in Kathmandu. From there, I will make my way to the mountain town of Lukla by plane, following a six-hour bus ride to the airport of Rabishap. We drop out of the air and onto the Lukla runway. This marks the beginning of the trek. It's time to start walking. There is no time to waste because tonight I will be sleeping in Namche Bazaar at the end of the valley and there is a long way to go. After a six hour hike, I finally make it just before dark. Enough time to catch the volleyball game going on between the local kids. On the second day, I will make my way to Tangbochi, where I will stay one night. In Tengboche, a visit to the monastery is well worth the investment of your time. And you can even catch the monks chanting if your time you visit right. I'm moving fast, and on day 3, I'm already headed to Dingboche. There, I will acclimatize for a day. I can start feeling the effects of the altitude, and I need a rest. Today's hike is defined by sightings of the mighty mountain, Amadablam, in the valley below. The kindness of the locals along the way make me feel so at home, and it feels like I could walk this mountain path all day long. Unfortunately, I am getting a big headache due to the altitude, so I take a well-deserved rest in Dingboche, where I will meet the nicest host at the Green Tower Lodge. On day 5, my next stop is the village of Chukung, at 4,800 meters, the altitude of the highest summit in Europe. This valley isn't as well traveled as the EBC trail, and I'm finding myself sharing the trail with just a few porters and Sherpas along the way to Imjatse or Island Peak Base Camp. This is the day where I realize that what I'm doing is quite out of the ordinary. A feeling is so constantly sick but that is so hard to experience in this modern world. Here, I have no distraction, no phone signal, no internet. I am forced by nature to just be in the moment. The high mountain peaks surrounding this quiet valley makes for the most scenic hike. And my mind wanders thinking of all the climbing stories related to these mountains. Maybe one day, I'll be part of one of them. By the time I arrive in Chukung, weather is turning bad, so I will stay inside for another day. The perfect opportunity to rest more. I am now at high altitude, and I need to acclimatize if I want to be able to go over the pass the next day. To get in shape, I will climb the nearby peak called Chukungri, sitting at 5,500 meters. <laughs> Day 7 marks a milestone. I'm headed to Kongmala Pass, the first of the three paths. This will turn out to be the most challenging day of the trip for me. The path is well defined and there are even cairns on the lower rockier slopes where navigation can be a bit tricky.
A still well-defined trail continues to wind up the mountainside, until we finally get our first sighting of the pass. The views from the early section of the trail are absolutely crazy. You can see the whole valley, with iconic peaks including Yamadablam, Lhotse and Makalu. After nearly four hours of hiking, I reached the large lake directly below the pass. It will take me another hour just to get past the lake and over the pass. At this point, I'm only halfway to my destination. I still need to climb down to the Kumbu Glacier and cross it before I can reach the village of Lobuche. It has taken me nearly nine hours, by far the longest and most tiring day of the trip. But I have finally made it to Lobuche, exhausted and dehydrated. I grab some food at the lodge and pass out in my bed, immediately. On day 8, I'm off to the village of Zongla, where I will prepare to take on the second of the three passes, Chola. Heading south of Lobuche, I follow the EBC track until it forks, approaching the top of Tokla Pass. I take the right fork and follow the ridge around the south side of Awi Peak. The well-defined trail curves west and offer great views of Cholatse and Taboche. Below is the lake of Cholacho, and further up the trail I imagine seeing what I think is Chola Pass, tomorrow's mission. After a couple of hours leaving Lobuche, I'm nearing Zongla already. On day 9, I'm going up Chola Pass. After crossing a small stream, the trail climbs steeply up a boulder field chute towards the glacier below Chola. I make it to the glacier in 3 hours, without much difficulty. In front of me stands the glacier, and all around are some impressive mountain peaks. After a short 30 minute glacier crossing, I reach Chola Pass. I now have to hike all the way back down to the small village of Dragnag, where I will stay overnight. On day 10, I'm going to Gokyo, just 6 kilometers away. It's easy hiking this morning as I head north along the eastern side of the Godzumba Glacier, looking for where the trail crosses it. I make it to Gokyo early in the morning and decide to rest here for the day. The mountain town sits by a turquoise blue lake, and past the village is the third and final pass of the trek, Ranjola. I will be going there tomorrow. On day 11, I'm heading over the third and final pass of the three, Ranjola. Once past the lake, the trail climbs steeply up to a relatively flat area that resembles a large crater. I can make out the prayer flags marking the pass. The trail remains gradual until it's almost directly below Rangola. Then it begins to steeply climb. The pass is rewarded with stunning views of Makalu, Everest, Lhotse and Nupte. Probably the most scenic views of the trek.
descending west over Rangela, I'm surprised to find some remarkable trail work. Large steps have been built into the mountain, descending from the top of the pass. Soon the steep western slopes meet the valley floor, where the trail flattens out and follows a stream past a series of small alpine lakes. This valley is not as well traveled, and once again I find myself walking along the old Tibetan trade route back to Namche Bazaar. This valley is very peaceful. Make a stop in Tame, and I will be heading back to Lukla the next day. I get lucky, and the lodge managed to book me a flight straight to Kathmandu the next morning. I would stay in Kathmandu for another week. It takes a few days to get used to the hectic atmosphere of the city. But I catch up with friends from the trek, and explore all the wonders this city has to offer before going home.